praise the Lord. I'm just going to share this a little bit, and then when we get started, um, man, seems like I've got some, got some folks riled up this morning. Um, <clears throat> well, not not folks, just one one folk. What is the singular for the plural of folks? Folk. Folk. One folk. But I'm sure, listen, hey, I appreciate a man that has enough intestinal fortitude to disagree with another man. And I also appreciate a man that walks in enough humility that may um, consider that, you know, outside of the doctrine of sortology or, or, or salvation, as Jesus is the only way to reconcile with God, that uh, hey, we can agree to agree, disagree on some of this stuff without calling uh, someone a reprobate. Reprobate? What's up with that, dude? I mean, I'm not like, dude, reprobate. I'm a jacked up country preacher that uh, might bust somebody in the mouth. I'm not even going to do that no more. The Lord's been working on me. Listen, I got so much crap going on right now. It's like I, I'm, I've been meat tenderized. You know that old. You can't afford the good steak, so you get the the, the tough steak and you take and you beat it. Mm, 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 mm. I've been tenderized these last couple of weeks, so I'm just like whatever. Uh, but I do. People are following it, and and I want you to understand biblically, it, it our opinion doesn't matter. Like I said Sunday morning, you know, opinions are like buttholes. We all got one. And people are like, man, how can you say that? I say it like this. Opinions are like buttholes. We all got one. And some of us are more buttholish than others. So, <laughs> just to throw that out there. Uh, but, listen, first off, I, I, I love uh, all my brothers and sisters in Christ that think I'm crazy uh, for casting demons out of people. I love all my brothers and sisters in Christ that think I'm crazy for... Uh, commanding hearts to be restored in the name of Jesus and commanding eyes to, to, to clear up, commanding ears to open up, uh, commanding ankles to, to, to unswell um, and pretendings to be made right, commanding headaches to, to cease, commanding attacks of demons in the middle of services where pains in the back and the side to stop and relinquish in the mighty name of Jesus. All y'all who think I'm crazy, I love y'all too, and I ain't even mad at you uh, because I've been there, uh, been been a whole lot worse off um, than uh, some of that. So, but you know, listen, I I, I just want to. I'm not gonna be long. I, I got a lot going on, man. We got church tonight. We got a uh, um, uh, a lot of exciting things. Church Friday night, uh, deliverance conference at Oak Grove Church in Springville, one of our ambassador network churches. I'm just going to share this to our church page, and then um, I'll rip it and uh, and share it on YouTube later. So, uh, the the real question is, uh, I don't think anybody um, would debate that a non-believer can be influenced by a demon. Now, so I want to try to systematically go through this. Um, number one, the word possessed um, is just just not a good word. Um, and I could break it all down. You can look it up yourself. Go to Blue Letter Bible. Look it up. The word that they translate out of the King James Version for possessed uh, literally means and absolutely means to be under the influence of. Um, and to, to, to say that a Christian can't be under the influence of would negate the necessity of a shield of faith. Um, demonization is not all that complicated. Um, it's not really, it is just coming into agreement with the lie of the enemy. Um, but So you got two, if we really back up the doctrine of, of, of a Christian can't be under the influence, not possessed, I, I got a bug in the house, I got these fruit flies. We are waging war on the fruit flies, and hallelujah, we're winning in Jesus' name. Vinegar and Dawn dishwashing soap, I mean, we live in the country, so we got, we you know, we guess we got these fruit flies, but we're waging war. But these things are in my house, but they don't own my house. Um, but but we're gonna get we're gonna break down scripture showing this. So when 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 the scripture when we look at that scripture, it says possessed. It means under the influence of. It doesn't mean 
uh, that they own anything. Possess is just a bad word. If someone breaks into my house, and I'm going to try to use this logically um, because I like logic. I don't think logic is the enemy of faith. I believe that if 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 I look at the scientific facts, I'll very soon figure out that the earth is really approximately 6,000 years old. Yeah, I'm one of those creationist guys because I believe the Bible is literal from Genesis to Revelation. From Genesis 1 all the way to the end of Revelations, I believe in the, that the Bible is literal. I believe that Jonah really was swallowed by a fish, not a whale. It doesn't say a whale, it says a fish. And um, so I believe if we look at it empirically and logically, I think we can uh, attribute to that. So looking at it logically, uh, um, a couple of things. Logically, some people will say, well, the curse has ended. Well, yeah, the, the curse of the law has ended. Uh, but the curse of sickness and death, has it ended? Um, no, because we all still die. These bodies are dying daily. I'll never forget going to see Brother Wyatt. And he would tell me, he's 96 years old, and he'd tell me, uh, Pastor, um, curse is a, uh, death is a curse. You know, it, it's horrible. Um, you know, and, and, and there's a lot more to that story than that. But, you know, we all still get sick, right? We all still are going to die. Does that mean that, that God doesn't want to heal us? No. Does that mean that faith isn't a vital aspect of our healing? Faith is a vital aspect of our healing. When Jesus looked at the people that were healed, he didn't say, hey, my words made you whole. He didn't say, uh, my power made you whole. Were all those aspects of it, but we they had to come into agreement and receive the healing by faith, by believing. Uh, now, our faith can never be in our faith. Our faith has to be in the finished work of Jesus Christ. But to say that the, the, the curse has ended, and now since the curse has ended, I cannot be, I, I cannot have, I can't have a spirit of infirmity, is just unbiblical and wrong. To say that uh, a Christian can't be possessed, hey, listen, I'll agree with you. A Christian cannot be owned by the devil and owned by God. You know, as I'm writing the, the second book, I, it, it's really apparent to me with this moral therapeutic deism, that birth out of deism, which flows the cessation doctrine, that the gifts of the Spirit are no longer prevalent today. And I'm going to tell you something. Most of the Baptist pastors that I know, they're not uh, capital C cessationists. In other words, they still believe that God speaks to them. They still hear from God. And the very essence of the gifts is, does God still speak to me? And how asinine is it? How crazy, how uh, completely uh, just mind-blowing would it be to think that an all-powerful, all-knowing, all-encompassing uh, uh, God everywhere all the time would take up residence in me and not talk to me? He said, well, Ron, the canon of Scripture is closed. Yeah, but I need to know what to preach Sunday morning. And I understand verse by verse, but letter by And I, hey, man, that makes, that expository preaching is awesome. But sometimes we need to hit on, on, on topical studies too. Sometimes I'll go verse by verse all the way through Ephesians or through John or through Genesis. But sometimes I need to preach on uh, the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I need to sort through the idea of a one-time baptism uh, with evidence of speaking in tongue, or I am baptized at conversion, and then now as I submit to the power of the Holy Spirit, the gifts are expressed through me, not just tongues, but all the gifts. And so, the, so out of that, you got this cessationist doctrine. They will tell you that there's no way. Uh, and then on the other side of that, you got this total sanctification, this Wesleyan perfection doctrine that where the uh, uh, sin nature was completely and totally ra uh, 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 eradicated. And then from both of those doctrines, both of these camps, I begin to preach the idea that a Christian cannot not be possessed but come under the influence of a demon. 
And they'll go to 1 Corinthians, the third chapter. And they'll talk about the temple. Listen, context matters. And if you'll go in and read 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, you'll see that it says if you defile the temple, because we all defile the temple. Let me tell you something. Every time you eat processed foods, you're defiling the temple. Every time you eat too much sugar, you're defiling the temple. And yes, with overeating and gluttony and stuff, you are destroying yourself. But it says God will destroy you if you defile the temple, right? So if I defile the temple, what is it talking about? Well, if I read 1 Corinthians, the third chapter in context, it is talking about the local church. That's the reason in Proverbs, the sixth chapter, God said one of the things that he hates is someone who sows discard, discord amongst the brethren. And then if I go to 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter, another temple, but it's talking about individuals as temple, not the, the body of Christ, not the local ecclesia, the called out assembly. It is talking about fornication. Now, who's the Bible written to? Uh, there's one message for unbelievers. Repent, confess your sin, confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Turn from your sin. That, that's the message in the Bible. The totality of the message in the Bible for unbelievers is to repent and turn to God in, in the process of salvation and be baptized. But the rest of it's for us, right? So when Paul is writing the letter to the church at Corinth, who is he writing to? He was writing to baby Christians. We see that in the very beginning of uh, 1 Corinthians, they, they, I mean, Corinthians was, Corinth was a church gone wild. So when I'm looking at that, what he's talking about is Christians, baby Christians, carnal Christians, because it talks about carnal Christians, worldly Christians, some of them may be saved, some of them might not be saved, that they were literally committing sexual immorality. So when it talks about defiling the temple there, it's talking about defiling the temple by having sex outside of the sanctity of marriage. Uh, so when we look at these scriptures in context that these people that are opposed to the deliverance ministry, I mean, they just don't add up. When we look at the word possessed, it, it, it's, that mean, it means demonic influence. If I can't be demonically influenced, why do I need a shield of faith? If I can't be demonically influenced, why do I need to renew my mind? And I know I am my biggest issue. It is my flesh. It is my flesh and me fulfilling the desires of the, my flesh, either in my mind or in my actions. It all starts in my mind. Uh, me having these vengeful thoughts, me uh, um, uh, gossiping, me not willing to forgive, that it is the flesh that opens me up to be uh, progressively influenced by demons. Uh, you know, and then there, there's some comments about fruit. And, and I don't know what to tell you, bro. Uh, uh, I mean, we got a, a, a fairly radical church of young men and young women that are living holy lives. Uh, that, 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 you know, I got a young man that lives with me that just, I mean, prays all the time. And you hear the guy preach. He's been preaching two years. His scripture memorization. And yeah, he's a smart fellow. He, he, he transferred from Birmingham Southern to Sanford. But his scripture memorization is off the chart. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is empowering him. Also empowered him to, to stop uh, the willful sin. Stop having sex outside of marriage. It, it's caused them uh, across the board to stop engaging with THC. It caused them to stop drinking. Do some of them struggle. I'm sure they do. I don't live with them. But I know they're in process. They're in church. And we've seen not just conversions, because a conversion can be true or false, right? How many times have you led somebody to the Lord and them a week later doing the same stupid thing? We shouldn't get caught up in that because we're not called. I can't save anybody. I'm called to love lovingly sow seeds and let the Holy Spirit do what the Holy Spirit does. Uh, and then we get the, the idea that, you know, we, we try to, the, the most blatant two passages in the Bible that, that shows that even the best of us can be demonically influenced would be when, when 
Jesus looked at Peter and referred to him as Satan. He wasn't calling him Satan-like. Satan had consumed him. You say, Ron, that was pre-conversion. And I, I can buy that. I can buy that. Uh, but then the Apostle Paul, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. That, that is a spirit of infirmity. That is an illness, a messenger of Satan. And people want to try to call it this and that. No, the Bible is intentional in the way that it's worded. It's intentional. And then I go back and I, I just look at the hundreds of people that their lives have been radically changed that we've taken through deliverance. Are they all right? No. Some of them are way worse off. Some of them come and, and, and they manifest a little bit. We don't get all the demons. They don't, they don't embrace the process. Uh, they don't embrace the process of discipleship. And we're a discipleship church. I mean, we have lots of, of Bible studies. We have lots of, you know, we believe uh, deliverance, discipleship, dominion. Um, so, man, I don't know what to tell you, bro. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not a reprobate. I am correctable. But nobody's shown me anything in Scripture that, that would lead me to believe what I see in Scripture plus the fruit that I see. I can't see anything that, that is in clear opposition of what I see. It's like the doctrine of cessation. There are no clear scriptures that say they ended. And then we get prophetic words all the time. I, I get a, uh, Reese gets up yesterday headed home, and he says, so and, I had a dream that so-and-so is going to invite you over for dinner. An hour later, I get a message from so-and-so invite me over for dinner. How does that happen? He gets a word, right? And, and now, I, I'm not sure what this invitation is all about, but I know I'm going because Reese had the dream, right? I'm praying for a guy the other day, that um, a while back, that's struggling with some anxiety, and Josh gets a prophetic word about an open pill bottle. I'm like, absolutely, man. But he, he even went on a nightstand. He said, yeah, it fell off the nightstand this morning. Um, you know, so we see prophetic words like that. Um, Look, you know, so so two sides of things. You got the, the people that believe the gifts have completely ceased. Uh, of course they don't believe in deliverance. I mean, they are truth, truth, truth with no grace, grace, grace. And on the other side of things, you got the grace, grace, grace who aren't having any truth, and they get caught up in the, in, in the Brian Simmons Passion Translation or the Robert Henderson uh, uh, Courts of Heaven or even the... Um, the physics of heaven, the Bethel stuff, because there's not enough truth, truth, truth. And, and you know, they're still my brothers. If they affirm that Jesus is the only way to reconcile with God, preach lordship, salvation, um, hey, let me tell you something, man. I've, I've missed it on a lot of stuff. And I humbly submit to anybody that can show me in Scripture where I'm wrong. Uh, but you just, I can't, I don't see it. And I've studied it. I've studied it for seven years solid now. I've written an entire book, writing two more books right now. Just took one to the printer uh, to have booklets made for a deliverance manual. My the, the scripture that I see in the Bible are coming true. And you say, well, well Ron, it, it talks about four different things in Mark 16. It says, those that believe, they shall cast out demons, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover and they shall be divinely protected because the taking up serpents isn't a literal taking up the serpents. It is the, you will take up the demons and cast them out. We see all of it. We see people healed, not once or twice a year, weekly. We see demons cast out of people weekly and their lives radically changed. I mean, Marilyn and I are walking through Ollie's and, and when you begin to preach this, there's an anointing that comes on you. We're walking through alleys in Forestdale, and dude, a demon manifests, and he looks at me, and we make eye contact. Dude starts growling and starts speaking in a clear demonic tongue. So he's walking around to the back. I have to turn around and go back to Maryland. He sees Maryland. And does the same thing. How did he know we were together? We were too. Because the Holy Spirit in us. So reprobate? No, man. Jesus is the only way to reconcile with God. Billy Graham was a reprobate. Uh, preaching universal salvation. Joel Osteen's a reprobate. 
preaching universal salvation. There's but one way to reconcile with God. Catholicism is a, is a reprobate doctrine. One way to reconcile with God. So I, I'm, I'm all about that stuff. But listen, if we believe that Jesus is the only way to reconcile with God, we should be able to, to fellowship without being mean and ugly. But let me propose this, because some of you guys are really aggressive. Really, really aggressive. And, 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 and you get mean. Really, really mean. You, you come in sideways at me. And, and, hey, and I'm not the man that I used to be, or I'd be coming back sideways, because I love you. And I believe that it is, as the end of time wraps up, I mean, we're talking, I mean, uh, Joe Rogan, uh, Tim Cast, uh, uh, mainstream media, they're all talking about demons. Why? Because the demon looked at Jesus and said, have you come to torment us before our time? It is their time. It is their time. It is their time. It said multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. What brought them to the valley of decision? Desperation. See, the lady with the issue of blood was desperate, so she pressed through the crowd. She pressed. So as we are watching this thing wrap up, as we're getting into the end of time, and listen, I don't know when it's going to be. I'm not going to tell you it's going to be here now, man. I don't know, man. Well, I'm writing the next book. I'm going to go to church tonight. Josh is starting a sermon series on uh, understanding a biblical worldview because we are a biblical church. Uh, and, 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 and it's all about Jesus. Everything flows from Jesus. The only way to reconcile with God, his death, burial, resurrection. We believe in the blood. We believe in the blood that washes us out of Hebrews, the ninth chapter. We believe in Isaiah 53. We believe in emotional and, and, and physical healing both. We believe that God sent us to set the captives free. We believe that we are his body out here to carry his body, carry out his will on our earth. We are to take dominion back one soul at a time. So, man, I don't know what to say, bro. Listen, Rob Wilson, I love you, buddy. I thought we had a connection. You called me a reprobate. Why did you do that, buddy? I still love you, man. And and I know as things ramp up, um, we're going to see uh, uh, a lot of things happen. I believe those that, that have a true relationship with Christ, I believe they're going to come around. Uh, you say, well, um, this person does this and that person does that. And this. Now, I've done a lot of stupid things, too. Um, but when I look at these 21, 22-year-old young men that, that are uh, living holy lives, I know what I was doing when I was 21 and 22 years old. It, it, there wasn't church, wasn't much uh, in my mind. Uh, but I love you. I'm gonna pray for you, Heavenly Father. We love and honor you. We thank you uh, for the power of God, the manifest presence of God that's still relevant and power today. Let me say this. They say, and I love this excuse. It don't even make any sense. Well, demons can't exist with God. The devil can't exist with God. God's omnipresent everywhere at all times. Oh, if demons can't exist with God, the devil went to the third heaven in Job, the first chapter, right? Um, one of the angels, or demons, or whatever it was, said, I will go out as a lying spirit. I mean, your, your, your idea, your idea is that a Christian cannot be demonically influenced. I'm not saying possessed. I promise I'm not. I'm not saying owned by. I look at it as like a scale. You got the slight suggestion, the full-on Jeffrey Dahmer meat puppet. Um, but your, 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 your arguments, they just don't hold up. They don't hold up. And so what do we do? We take clips of people, and then we build entire YouTube channels around taking clips of people out of context. Uh, that ain't cool, man. And, and then, you know, and I'm talking to this guy, and he's telling me about going to a church, and there is a false Holy Spirit. It's called the Kundalini Spirit. And, um, and, and I'm not going to call this guy out, but you know who you are. You went into that church, and you got prayed for, and you become depressed and suicidal. See, to me, that's classic demonic influence. 
You prayed for a guy on the street, and he got delivered. He said he felt a heat all over him. He's on your YouTube channel. That's delivered. The spirit of pharmacia come off that man. Um, you know, but the, also your comment was is that if I share this, I'll leave, I'll lose two hundred YouTube subscribers. So do you want to preach the truth, or do you want to build a YouTube channel? And listen, I get it, man. I I, I get it. You know. When I was in the car business, a good video would get fifty thousand views in a week. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not selling Jesus. I'm lifting him up so the captives can be set free. Uh, so if you're in this for YouTube clicks or uh, Facebook clout or whatever, man, please find an altar, repent, and just ask. Search yourself. Say, Father, if I'm wrong, and I pray that all the time. Because, man, I struggle with this stuff. I do. I struggle with this stuff. I struggle to wrap my natural mind around spiritual realities. Uh, but I am. I, I do my best to submit myself unto God. Openly confession, confessing that, hey, I might not have it all figured out. And you know what? I know I ain't got it all figured out. And I know I got a lot to learn. Um, uh, you know, but I do know this. I know fruit. And I know fruit that remains. So if I got fruit that remains, it means I got to be hooked up to the true vine. Um, so anyway, listen, I love y'all. God bless you. Hope y'all have a good day. I've got to get to work.